Hey everybody, it's me, poet Richard M. Little Jr., uh, coming live from Cell Block C, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of poetry today. Um, bar any kind of interruptions or internet con contraptions or anything else for the ma that matter, actually. Um, a couple things that are coming up going pretty good. So um, I have a new book coming out. Um, I'll talk about that more a little bit a little bit later here. Um, we'll probably do, I don't know, maybe five, ten pieces of work, and then maybe more. It really depends. Um, <clears throat> it's very hot out here in Dallas, although we had a rainstorm, so they said that we had a cold front come in, so it went from 100 degrees to 96. There you go. And a little bit more humidity, too. So as far as on the other, on my health-wise, I'm feeling a lot better. I think um, losing some weight finally. Uh, I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm losing it. And my blood pressure has been pretty damn good, so you know it's been it's been pretty good. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and start with from where I left off the last time, which is the last time I had live poetry was about a month ago. So this one is called. Well, we're gonna skip that one. We're gonna skip one of them because I don't want to mean today, and I, that's 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 just what it's gonna be. Um, let's see. This one is called "I Want to Be." Even though I write poetry to heal myself from the inside by bringing my demons out into the darkness, so to say, into the light, by using my ink that flows through me, spilling down upon the paper as I write, there is, in fact, that I can pull inspiration from anyone by using empathy. And this was just the occasion when I wrote this one. It's called I Want to Be. Hey, baby, I just wanted to leave a note just so you would know what you mean to me. And though I know that we just barely met and love is always a gamble, I will place that bet no matter the odds. Even though it may be way too early for some, I've already fallen in love with you. So now I want to be that memory when you're all alone. You know, the one that makes you smile when you hear your favorite song. The one you roll the window down to when the sun comes out to warm your heart and soul on a cold winter's day. I want to be the memory that you think about when you and all your friends are out wondering why you have all those sparkles in your eyes and the grin on your face. I want to be the one you feel when you're, when you're all alone in the bed at night. What makes you feel all right? But just the scent of me still lingering in the air from the special night that you and I held on, that you and I had held on tight until the sun came up when the daylight found us making love. And then I want to be sitting there next to you, holding hands on a beach, laying down right there next to you on a blanket as the night comes, looking up at all the stars up in the skies, looking a lot like fireflies sparkling in your beautiful eyes. When we turn grow old and gray, thinking back about when we were young and the day we met, so very happy that I was that I won that bet just as we were caught by the rising sun, holding on to one another tight while we were making love all over again. And uh, that's a little bit older one, and I like that one. I love you too, Kylie, and hey, Chris, and Laura, and everybody. We're having a little good party here today. Good job. Thank you. Um, let's see here. What's going on? Uh, if, I don't, if I don't see your name, it's because I didn't see it, but, man, we're filling up pretty fast. <laughs> so we're going to go to the next one. Um, it's called... Oh, that's the new song. We're not going to not going to do that one. Um, yeah, and some of the short po my some some of the short stuff that I have going on lately is uh, some of the biggest battles we will ever fight throughout our entire lives is not between another person or even our own demons, but between our hearts, minds, and souls. And we all know what that means. Um, this is from a fan, Richard. I know exactly what you were saying, and really, you have made me open my eyes to find your post because truly, I don't believe in love. But like I said, what you just posted made me think back. Also about the first kiss, holding hands, being friends. Not, not the hate and the horrible memories of bad, bad relationships. And, and, and for that, thank you. And I thank you that. That's, I love when I get stuff from my fans a lot. Um, all right, here's another one from a fan. I remember reading Conversations with God, which is one of my Kindle books out there. Uh, 11 bonds exact, but we create what we create is from our innermost soul. The true gift is relying on the or relaying the message and words and pictures. That what you have an abundance of, Mr. Richard M. Little Jr. Beautiful words and portrayal of the guardian angel with you. Thank you, and thank you again. That's awesome. Um, let's see, we're gonna keep on going. One day, no, we're not gonna, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this one. Hmm. So this one gets me a lot because this was a real story a couple years ago. And I met this little girl in her family about five years ago when I first started writing. And I was doing stand-up poetry here and there and promoting my very first book, uh, Battle Lost Writer's Birth. 
talking about my fight for Ryder, and her family had come to watch and listen to me and said, she said she really thinks Ryder is cool and would love to meet him someday. And I, of course, said, yeah, well, yes. So when I went to the hospital, I met Hannah. She was 10 years old. And when she saw my head was bald just like her, she smiled and hugged me, and it was, it's been shaved ever since. That's why I have a shaved head, by the way. Um, I gave her an autographed copy to read for, and I read it for her, and when it was done, she said, you know, I know Ryder's thinking about you, and you'll see him again, which we shared a cry, and, you know, five years ago, I didn't know that at the time. So, well, a year later, after I won the right to see him, uh, and the rest is history. So, the next day, I called her parents, and they answered, and they told me, though, <laughs> that she read the book every day until she had passed on a few months before uh, I got Ryder. That one really hurt. So, this one was for Hannah. Dear God, I'm writing this letter to you since it seems you're not listening to all my prayers. I know you're very busy with all the angels who must also be there because I've been waiting for your answer and for all your, my prayers to come true. While I lay here in this bed getting sicker, I know because I heard the doctors telling my mommy that the cancer is now spread all through. I'm trying to let you know not to worry and that I'm not scared at all. And I know that I'll be an angel, be with you before the end of fall. Can I please pick out the color of my pretty angel wings? Because my mommy's favorite color is light blue and it hurts me to see her crying every day, asking you why I'm sick and what did you do so wrong. My daddy is a good man and I know he still loves you, so please don't ever be mad at him for all the names he's been calling you. He's trying hard not to cry in front of me, but I hear him when he thinks I'm asleep, so I tell him, Daddy, it'll be okay. I'll be an angel. I love you. Just you wait and see. I'm looking forward to flying up in heaven and I hope I don't get scared. Just like all those pretty birds I see out my window that fly so high, I wonder if they had cancer too and do they also have to die? Is it pretty up in there in heaven? Are there any other kids like me? Do we get to hear stories like my daddy told before I had to go to sleep? Do we have to go to school? I only ask because I'll miss all my friends. Did you see what they made me? All these get well cards with all their love they did send. I do have a favor please if that's okay to ask. Can you look over for my mommy? She isn't doing very well, and I hope I didn't give her my cancer because the doctor had said it spread. If I did, you can tell me, please. I promise I won't tell. Well, I'm ready now. When you're ready, when you read this letter, I'll be waiting for you. But I need to go and write a letter to my mommy and daddy to say goodbye, and that I'll see you soon in heaven, and I will always love you. Love, Hannah. Wow. I didn't. I got through that one without crying. I usually do cry on that one pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, that she's she was quite a girl, I'll tell you that. Um, all right, we're going to keep on going. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's a new song again. And not going to do that one. I'm just going to keep on going because some of this stuff is not really poetry. But All right, poetry is not just a rhyme of words or phrases. Anyone can write a sentence down on a piece of paper. The difference is the ink that the poet bleeds. And I truly believe that, too. So... Uh, let's see. Uh, I could not decide whether I wanted you in my dreams or not, so instead I wrote you into the lines of my poetry so you would forever live in my soul. I like that one, actually. When her heart started pounding out a song about the rhythm of love, his soul asked her to dance under the full moon's glow. Poetry is a smile or a tear, or laughter and fears, good times and the bad, happy and sad. Poetry is and will always be our heart telling secrets to our souls, who we'll always have something to say. Poetry, because our souls have something they need to say, see? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Mm. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this one, even though it's long. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing because everybody loves this thing. It's called An Epic Mini Poetry Tale of Two Souls. The first part is called Destinations Unknown, and it's kind of scientific. That's why I did it, and it was kind of a joke, but um, it came out so good that I, I just kept on writing. It was a lot of fun. And this one is actually a six-part series about these two souls that, that meet, you know, their soulmates out in the middle of nowhere before God, before anybody else, and it's, it, it kind of tells a story about them. Destinations unknown. When two lonely souls collide on a collision course of love, amazing things will happen from the celestial fields high above. As they now all rejoice that two of their beautiful souls have finally come together in a matrimonial binding of love. The cosmic rays from whereabouts of destinations unknown will sometimes come together to form a parallel paradox universe from where true love had actually begun. 
That, in turn, I'm happy to say, will cause some abnormalities in the ratio of two souls becoming one, meaning that two that the <laughs> meaning that that two that would be one plus one. More lonely souls in this world are no longer lonely anymore. Furthermore, when this paradox of emotional mix-up occurs, the new dynamics of two souls becoming one ch -ch -ch changes considerably by adding in their words, not minus to the equation for the amount of what is his, what is ours, and in reality, what is hers. And in conclusion, when all the information is added together and all the facts are out for everyone to see, the complete equation, MC equals plus squared one, is that those two, cell, those two souls who collided together and they combined as one usually end up, when it's all said and done, before it's over, actually becoming three. Baby. Get it? <laughs> so the very first love is the part two. Way back before man was even born, before there was a single drop of water in any of the oceans deep, even before there was any mountains or valleys across all the land, before all the hot desert sands, Somewhere out in the bitter, cold darkness, high above, there was two lonely souls. No, there is no once upon a time, of course, for that is only in fairy tales, met by chance for the very first time that we know of, and fell in what we now call true love. Today, as we all know, of course, of course, the souls will never die. They will just ascend or move on. But some are even reborn back here on this planet, for, uh, on this third planet revolving around the one yellow sun, to try it all over again to fall in love. And even though sometimes, though, why, we're not sure, they will somehow remember their lives that they had the last time they were here, so they start searching for their mate all over again. Hence the name, you know, soulmates. My friends, and so it, becomes, so it begins, for this is just an epic tale of how it all started. You see, once upon a midnight sun, it all began. When you and I, quite by chance, I should say, up in the celestial fields high above, way out there in the cold, bitter darkness where our true love began, we watched while we made love as all the stars and the suns flickered off and on like a switch, mind you. The only banging going on was you and me. And I even remember clearly when, oh, you know, that old guy, what's his name, who created all the planets, including the moon. Yes, even Earth, my dear, in just six days. And then he rested on the seventh. I was in awe, but you and I were still on our honeymoon making love, just like we still do all day, even if it's just to say I love you. And I could not lend him a hand, but I'm a huge fan of his. Don't get me wrong. Amen. Me and you have been reborn more times than any other souls before you and I have always found each other. And darling, I absolutely love falling in love with you all over again. In fact, you remember some of those lives that we lived back in the first beginning when they called me Adam and you were Eve? They called you, uh, the Eve they called you, if I remember right. Even back then, you were such a beautiful soul to behold in sight. That's why when the snake was always coming around, there were so many lives. I can't remember them all. But one of my favorites was when we were at Bogart McCall. Oh, and that time when we were, when you were the queen of the Nile, you made so much love and made me smile. Cleopatra and I was a mighty soldier, Mark Anthony. This, this last one, though, I remember so very well. I was a poet, and I was fighting a war against hell itself. And let me see, it all started on that blanket on a very hot midsummer's night. It was a full moon, if my memory was right. I was working on a new piece of poetry, and you looked so good. I started writing it all over you, and I called it the story of me and you. And, of course, we go into part three, me and you, which, of course, is my very first love poem that I ever wrote a couple years ago. Maybe one day on some hot midsummer's night, out on a blanket under the stars and a full moon, maybe I will create a brand new poem, a masterpiece. No, not down on paper, for I will write it all over you. I will start right there in the center of your beautiful body as I will profess my love to you, wearing nothing on more than my poetic verse between us. I will be writing roses are red and violets are blue between your beautiful bare breasts and watch them as they rise and fall with your every single breath. Next, I will write that I love you as I slowly come up from behind you so that with every stroke of my pen, you will forever remember that day to the very night, from the very beginning until the end where I will start with a brand new verse, and it will read that you will always have my heart on the back of your neck, and then I will move in a little closer so that you will never forget those words that I have written unto you. And then as I hear you start to moan in a poetic adulation of aesthetic size, I will feel you as you start to hesitate, but baby, by that time it will be way too late, because those words that I now write have written on you will have found the hidden path down below through the middle of your naked back, and I will continue as my words will now start to transform into a story of how our two souls have come together. 
just you and me, so you can see how much that I need and do you do love you. I will then write more about your beauty and what your love has done to me. Yes, a beautiful masterpiece I will, that I soon will write. As those words of all my love for you turn into all the colors of our emotions, just as I am Michelangelo painting in the Sistine Chapel, or Vincent Go on his starry night. Yes, baby, when we are together on that very hot midsummer's night, laying on a blanket under a full moon's glow, I shall create a new masterpiece, a brand new poem, and I will call it the story of me and you. Oh, I love that one. And that is part three. So uh, I'm going to split this up, but those are the first three part of, of the, my epic poem that I'm writing right now. Uh, I love that one. There's a lot of people that really enjoy that one. I just, you know what, it's funny because I love reading that first, my very first love poem. It really was good. And I was drinking, uh, Mar so I was drinking, what was I doing? It was a dirty martini on the top of Houston Street Bar, up on the roof, downtown Fort Worth. That's why I wrote that. All right. Of course, everybody knows what I think about love. Is love dead? Broken hearts and shattered souls are way too common today. Everyone has a story of love that has gone bad in every step away. What's going on? What's the problem? Has love lost its hold? Have we gone as far to kill it off? Are we really becoming cold? I, for one, think love is dead and shall never find me. As I look around and I start to frown because hate violence is all I see. Nowadays, you give your heart, hoping that they're the one. Just to find out soon enough that you're played you and now they're done. I, for one, miss those days when love was in the air. But I'm sorry to say. <laughs> but I'm sorry to say. But I'm sad to say. The love has died from a world that just don't care. Yeah, I do believe that. All right, let's see here. Some more short poetry. As the world we live gets darker, I find myself living in all the words of my spilled ink where, I hope, where hope still lives alongside love and understanding. A lie is a lie no matter what color it is. Remember that. Uh, let's see. Lying to someone is much more than being dishonest. It's your way of saying to that person, I believe you're an idiot and I have no respect for you. And that's my thought anyway. Just remember you cannot lie to a liar and you cannot cheat on a cheater. Think about that for a minute. When you're constantly hurt someone, eventually that person stops caring. So don't be surprised when they start treating you the same way you've always treated them. And I'm, I read this a couple years ago and I meant it. Um, 50 years after I die, I want to be remembered not for what I write or what I said. I want to be known for the love of my heart and that I inspired even just one person to be the best that they could be because they never gave up on anything just like me. And see here, her soul refused to stop dancing even though his heart forgot the tune. Uh, when he held her lips against his for that brief moment after their first kiss, his soul danced with hers for an eternity both of their hearts made love. I have thousands of these little short ones. And if you've been in my home, in fact, you can see it kind of up on the wall up there. Uh, There's my little art thing. I'm, uh, a lot of those are my words. I'm, I made 150 of those last Christmas and gave them all out. People I still ask for them today. <laughs> I might do the same thing this year. When he held her in his arms for the first time, his heart started beating out of rhythm while pumping out the ink as his soul wrote down the rhymes. And this is, of course, true. The saddest part of a love that has been lost is when your soul realizes that the beat from a pounding heart has ended and the dance has come to an end. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Craig and Ryan and Charles. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Hey, he was just here. <laughs> uh, when you stole that beat from my pounding heart, you caused my soul to exhale, whispering secrets of how the new love will begin. We're going to do a few more here, and then I'll think I'm going to be finished up for tonight. We'll... We'll pick up again sometime this week. Sometimes in the darkness is all that is needed to cause a sadness in a poet's soul. Uh, let's see. All right, we're going to end it with this one. Uh, this is from my very second book called, called uh, Into the Darkness, a Poet's Journey. And it's called As I Drive to Work Today. Tears will fall streaming down my pale, tired face while you say, well, because they do that every day. They fall for lost loves of my past and happiness that never last. For all four of my sons I hold so dear and a, and a bleak future that I now fear. The thought that I will die alone and when I knock there's no one home. I cry for sorrow and regrets for good friends I've lost and will not forget. 
I cry for a son that's not mine, whom I searched forever and could not find. The homeless ones now on the streets and dying addicts I'll never meet. For cancer patients now in their beds and cures not found for any of them. For truth and justice that never come and in innocence lost to some. Is that the answer that you seek? Because those are the reasons just to peek. For peace and strength the longer mine and the will to live I cannot find. The battle lost that took its toll as the darkness came and destroyed my soul. A heart that's broken beyond repair that's filled with anger and deep despair. For a love whose heart will never be mine did I wait until the end of time. I have many reasons that I cry, and yet you ask the question, why? I wonder if I died tomorrow, would anyone care? Or am I alone in my own dark despair? Will other tears fall when they bury me, or am I just a faded memory? My tears fall for many things, like words unjust and the, what they bring. For babies that are born to parents lost will never know the price it costs. For brothers in arms that have paid the cost of hero souls that we lost. The loneliness that I now feel as I live a life that's so real. I'm ready now. I'm all alone. I cry for God to take me home. Uh, that was in my second book that I said, which, man, 19 books coming up. <laughs> uh, we're going to stop with that one here. Um, but the new book that's coming out is, if, I don't know if you guys have seen the cover, but the cover's done. And let me get up here because I'm doing so much right now. It's crazy. Um, it is called, oh, as you've seen, like I said, I just did the cover release. I want to put it out there again after after I get done here. That way people see it again. And it is coming up here soon. Come on. Oh, no, that's not it. Too much stuff going on, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> wow. How much do I write? Jeez. Oh, 2.4 million. That's how much. All right. If you can believe it, it's called... Whispering Secrets Between Hearts and Souls, A Poet's Journey. Uh, cover is finished. Um, the inside, I have a couple more things to do on the inside. I'm looking for a couple of poets, like I always do, if they want to add a, a, a couple, uh, a poem or two. Um, I always do that to every single book to my friends, whoever want, who wants to be published or want to be in, in one of my books, that's fine. Let me know, just email me or message me, and we'll we'll talk. I'm looking for about three or four, like I, like I do all the time. Um, and um, it'll be out here probably in the next month, probably sometime in August. So, all right, guys, that's it for me tonight. Have a good night. Remember, peace, love, and poetry. And uh, this is Richard M. Niddle, Jr., poet, author, and just all-around good guy. Sometimes, not all the time. Bye-bye. <laughs>